it, man, because there's no paydays, like, you know, it's no frequent paydays like that. I'm Thurs, uh, from Inglewood, California, and uh, I'm a culture architect and an artist, and um, yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> I started off as a stat analyst when I left college, when I graduated college, and um, man, I was really miserable being in that cubicle, you know, doing work that I cared nothing about, and I was pretty much just running data all day, you know, for these actuaries. And that shit sucked, man. I was like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. The money's cool, but you know, what good is money if I'm not, you know, living my life to the fullest? So, a blessing in disguise, I got fired because yeah, I was doing too many activities outside of work, you know. I had shows out of state and um, certain interviews and just opportunities that would come up and I had to call off for work, you know, a few times. And I had a, a famous, famous um, excuse, and uh, it was diarrhea. <laughs> so I, I'd, always, <laughs> I'd always call in and be like, yo, I can't come in today, man. You, you know what it is. <laughs> the bubble guts. So, you know, that would build up. And one day I got uh, snowed in, actually rained in, in uh, New London, Connecticut. And I was supposed to be at work Monday morning. I ended up getting back Monday night. So I went in Tuesday morning. And, you know, they called me into the office. And they like, yo, this is not working out. You know, we're kind of aware of what you've been doing. We saw I had a, a little article in Billboard magazine at the time. And then one of my coworkers just kind of like were following me. So every time I'd call in, like, oh man, there's a show today. So he was kind of like, you know, dry stitching on me. but. More, and more out of excitement, I guess. He didn't know the code. But, um, still no excuse. That's some suck shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I got fired. And ever since, man, I never went back to that format of being a nine to five worker. I was just been trying to build my craft and uh, build a business around myself and just build opportunities for myself to be an artist and have my art showcased. All right, I got started. Uh, doing you know, rap music in high school. Well, even before that, uh, the passion I guess started when I was like in second grade, first grade. Big fan of Criss Cross, seeing what MC Airman was doing. That was my first concert at the Great Western Forum. So ever since I saw the whole production behind his, um, his live show, I was just mesmerized. I was like, damn, dude, I want to be an entertainer. I want to be an artist. And, um, my mom got me this little keyboard. You know, it didn't do nothing. It just played loops. And I have a microphone. I'd be rapping raps with this keyboard. And then I started trying to figure out how to record myself. So I had two radios. I'd get instrumentals from Sam Goody or whatever record store. Press play and record on the other radio because it was just had a mic that was outside of the radio and just recorded all the sound. So I have this music playing and I'd be rapping into it. You know, I figured out how to record myself. So that was like my first, I guess, form of mixtapes. <laughs> so that's what started it. And then in high school, I was part of this crew called Rapture Camp. And um, Unjust Anthony gave us gave me my first real studio experience. So I recorded my first real songs in 10th grade. And that's where it really like, you know, picked up for me, doing like little talent shows. And um, College is where it really started progressing. I started doing internships and started learning about the music industry and how to actually navigate through it, what it takes to kind of be seen. And um, I'd say from college is where it really took off, you know, like where I was doing the group thing and making, doing more networking and, you know, getting uh, in the video on MTV, you know, from YouTube to MySpace to MTV. Do I ever have second thoughts of, you know, choosing this path? And I say, hell yeah, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a father too, so I always have to provide, you know, financially. And sometimes this music stuff doesn't pay as frequently as you would like. And, you know, opportunities are just not abundant all the time. You know, it takes, like, momentum to frequently get stuff popping. 
and um, you take a little break or you just have that creative moment where you're creating, you know, stuff can maybe slow down if you're an independent artist. And I'm independent. I don't have any big machine pushing my product out like that. So the independent artist, there's definitely second thoughts on the financial end, but, you know, creatively and passion-wise, there is no second thought. There's no plan B. It's just, you know, rolling with plan A and flushing it all out. But on the money end, you kind of like, damn, you think like, is there anything else I can do to put some, some food on the table and get some more ends in my account? So I guess that's the biggest struggle, just like making sure I'm above water. So being a father and being an artist, man, I think it's a big blessing. Um, I think anything that gives you a different perspective of life adds to whatever art you're doing. Because, you know, it just it helps you connect with a wider audience than just the life you're living. Like, if you can see yourself through somebody's eyes sometimes, that kind of might help shape what you're doing a little differently to affect more people. So, I take, uh, I get a lot of inspiration from just like doing normal activities, like going to the park, playing basketball, my son trying to teach him how to dribble. It kind of gives me a perspective of how he looks at me. And it kind of like, you know, it influenced my art a little bit. You know, I might write a song, you know, based off of just one small experience. So, it's definitely a blessing, man. It definitely keeps me motivated and uh, makes me want to make them proud. I find inspiration um, through family. You know, a lot of inspiration just comes from conversation, man. Um, conversation with, you know, my kids, conversation with my cousins, uh, different artists that I work with, and a lot of inspiration from party in my living room, man. Just um, watching how people respond to music, you know, you kind of end up being a sociologist or like a, yeah, you're pretty much a sociologist with being an artist. You study people all day, for the most part. You study yourself and then you study how people react to what you do and you just study what affects people. And doing this whole party in my living room thing, you know, I created as a platform just to perform. But I also have my friends coming out to DJ and I'm seeing how people respond to different songs, like what gets them hype. So, I find inspiration in people's reactions and just like certain uh, ways I want people to react. I find inspiration in like different sounds that I see them vibing to. So inspiration comes from everywhere, really, man. And it's very frequent when I'm driving. Yeah. Daily routine, wake up, make breakfast for the kids, get my daughter to school. I drive King, I either go play with Kingston at like a little, uh, What's it called? One of those like um, jungle gyms. I drop him off at his uh, great grandmother's. I either have sessions lined up, or I'll be helping out with some Red Bull work, just you know, on the marketing end. So it varies from day to day, but I try to have full days. Like if I'm going to be, you know, working, I try to make sure I'm getting like a full work day with Red Bull, or doing a full work day as an artist, like fully writing fully sitting down with a producer, fleshing out song concepts. You know, whatever I'm doing, I just try to fully commit to and just base my day around that. And then this is back to the family. What would I say to somebody that's trying to be an aspiring artist? Uh, I'd say definitely study, man. Like, I think being an artist is one of the hardest jobs, if you want to look at it as a job. <laughs> oh. It's crazy, man, because you tear yourself down a lot as an artist because you're, well, me personally, I'm constantly trying to perfect what I what I do. Not even just for a listener, just for myself. Like, I have a high standard, so like, I'll re, sometimes I do songs, it'll be perfect. Then I do another song, I'll sit with it, and I go back and just re-record. Like, I could have, I could have, you know, perform this better. I could have got this point across way better. It's all about those connecting points on each song. So um, I say perfect your craft to where you're 100% comfortable showcasing it and you know, know what the field, know what the field is about and know what kind of people you want to be around. Networking is key. Relationships are currency. And um, and 
that's the that's probably the best advice I can get. Just perfect the craft and build a great network around yourself. What I appreciate about my journey is that I know I'm constantly getting better as an artist. Um, I feel like I'm constantly becoming a better person. I think that's the, the best thing. Even with all the trials and tribulations and disappointments some, that sometimes occur, we're just trying to be creative, man. And like, you know, there's like a lot of moments that you feel uninspired because you create something and you might see somebody piggyback off your creation or see somebody get more props for what you're doing. And um, I guess the worth in that is knowing that you're doing something of value and I guess the journey teaches you to protect that value and to make sure you get that valuable, um, intangible, creative property into the right platform you know, that's going to be appreciated by the right people. You can follow me on ThursEveryday.com, PartyInMyLivingRoom.com, um, Thursday with a G on Twitter, King Thurs on IG, and uh, YouTube.com slash Thursday. You know, just Google me. I come up everywhere. <laughs> but uh, this is Thurs, and this is Appreciate.